that game last night, when you think of how unlikely it was for it to all wind up with the chips on the line like that and for it to come down to the wire and maybe it would have been a tie, but the Chargers call a timeout. And by the way, I'm not wrong about Justin Herbert. He threw the game-winning touchdown in overtime. Mike Williams got to catch that. All that said, what a season for the Raiders. He, what a season for the Raiders. Yeah, considering everything that they went through, right? From the John Gruden things to the to the Henry Ruggs to the players uh, with the gun. Playing Call of Duty. Playing Call of Duty. Uh, real life Call of Duty, that is. Um, to most recent DUI situation. Just everything. You know, the former coach, the late John Madden passing away. Just everything, you know, interim coach. But they stayed together and stayed the course. They didn't... They didn't start to crumble. I think in situations like that, you see organizations and teams start to separate themselves and everybody save their own self by jumping off the boat, but everybody stayed together and they got it done. They got it done in Jay. And it, we off too often, I think, it comes down to the coach and the quarterback, right? Because mm-hmm. it's just an easier story to tell. And because those are leadership positions and everything. And you notice teams with coaches and quarterbacks, those are the teams that succeed. But I'm thinking about post Gruden blowing up and Basaccia and everyone seemed to like Basaccia and they won and then they started losing a little bit and it was like, well, I guess not, right? But but I'm going to the coach and the quarterback. Basaccia and Derek Carr seem to me to keep this thing together. I mean, look, I, I forget who said it uh, a couple of days ago about how Derek Carr single-handedly kept this team alive throughout the course of the season. Now, I think that's something that sometimes you can undervalue a guy's leadership ability, just them staying cool, calm, and collective in the midst of chaos, and that's what Derek Carr is. That's why he's so valuable. So all that said, here we go. Pittsburgh beats Baltimore, and the Steelers are in, unless there's a tie in this game, and the Colts lose. To like, and it was the scenario that I was hoping that would, we'd get to see. And late in overtime, it seemed like there was an acceptance that both teams are just going to make the playoffs. Don't risk, you know, field goal and everything. If you don't call a timeout, yes, they're still going to run the ball, but not with the idea of kicking a field goal. On top of that... What changes? Why? Why Why? what change? Ex- what can you, you explain to people why the mentality might change when you call a timeout? Well, because now, now you're like, okay, you're calling a timeout. You really don't want to get into the playoffs. So if we get closer, we're just going to kick the field goal. If we make it, great. We get 10 wins. If we don't, there's no time left on the clock. We all get a tie. So essentially, you basically you're giving them an incentive to kick. Exactly, you, you yes. messed up and did the wrong thing. Then you're trying to sell people that don't really understand what the personnel grouping was supposed, how you were going to put your personnel grouping into the game. You don't need to call a timeout because be, from the the last running play to the running play in between the timeout. You got to shuffle in personnel groupings anyway. You have someone on the sideline who handles the personnel for you. So when you run the ball and that 24-second clock is winding down, your personnel is coming in and out. Derek Carr starting to make a case. I, I, I go by what I see, and Derek Carr, given the job he did this year. Make a year, case for what? Making a case, you know how Key says buckets? He is toward the top of that second bucket outside the elite. Okay, yeah, I just don't put him in but, a bucket with Aaron Rodgers. I thought no, that's no, what no, you were alluding I, to. Okay. No, only insofar as here are the elite quarterbacks in the game. Can Derek Carr get there? Can he get there? If he beats Joe Burrow in the playoffs now after after beating Justin Herbert, who, by the way, played out of his mind. Is beating Joe night. Burrow put him in that upper echelon? No. Okay. No, but it's but, but, it but start, each, it continues each to is move a little the ball down the field, little brick in the wall. Okay. Each man, one. dude ain't never had a top receiver, man. Y'all, I, I can't even get it. We, I'm not. I'm not saying that he's not the, special. I can't even get into the argument about him because it's like, what are you looking at? I just don't understand what y'all look at when y'all look at these players and say, oh, well, he's not. Well, to be fair, right. you have him but, straddling the buckets. You have yeah. at times had Derek Carr as a top quarterback and at other times had him toward the top of that next he's a, tier. He's a, he's a top quarterback in the National Football League. He's one of the six or seven quarterbacks in the league. There's nothing wrong with that. See, I think even though they lost to me, Herbert's the better quarterback. But Derek Carr's team won. You got to give it to him. I think he is a upper echelon quarterback. I just don't have him in the same conversation with Aaron Rodgers. And I don't think well, that's no, a slight. Not, he's not I don't think same, that's a slight to Derek Carr. He's not all. in the same conversation. Yeah. Like he's not there's a, 
there is no There's Aaron Rodgers versus Derek Carr. It's, it's not that. It's right. when you're talking about six or seven quarterbacks and some of them are falling off the board, you're not going to all of a sudden stop wanting to be a part of that quarterback's life because you don't get Aaron Rodgers or you don't oh, get I agree with that. Tom Brady or you don't get Patrick Mahomes. And then all of a sudden it's like, oh, man, we just – everything's over with. You know, Roger Sherman of The Ringer tweeted out, it was this morning, I guess. Entering Sunday, NFL quarterbacks had 20 first downs on 85 attempts in fourth and nine or longer scenarios in 2021. So fourth and nine or longer, there have been 85 attempts. Justin Herbert went five for five in the last five minutes of that game and overtime. He had 20% of the season's fourth and long pass conversions by himself over the course of three drives. And by the way, to me, Herbert, before we move on, Herbert threw the game-winning touchdown, right? Mike Williams, Williams had, to, had it. Huh? He had it. When you hit the receiver in the hands in the end zone, got to catch that ball. Well, anybody that comes with this whole thing about, well, Herbert is 15 of 17, and he's had no winning seasons, no playoff stars. I'm like, if you watched that game last night, that dude is, that dude is different. He's different. He's di he kept them in the game on so many fourth down conversions. He, yeah, did. he did. He did a good job throwing the ball, man. There's no question about Special. it. Special. He did. Now, as it turns out, it like they couldn't stop the run when it mattered most. Going into the game, what was it? You can't the Chargers can't stop a nosebleed on the ground. Raiders are gonna run it at him. Sure enough, that wound up deciding the game, but it didn't have to decide the game. If stay if if Coach Staley doesn't take the time out, they're both in the playoffs. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.